Hey TechCrunch, we are here with Damon Kronke, VP of Business Development, SurveyMonkey. Hello everyone. One of our key sponsors for this TechCrunch. Yes, very excited. Well, why, why are you supporting TechCrunch? What, how is this important for SurveyMonkey? A number of reasons really to support TechCrunch and, and be here in Russia. Um, I think SurveyMonkey is obviously a Silicon Valley company and speaks very much to the tech community. Uh, but more than that, you know, a lot of our early adopters, a lot of our users are entrepreneurs that are trying to get feedback for new ideas, you know, test market concepts or product concepts. So it's a very important uh, audience for us to continue to, to talk to and make sure that we're staying ahead right. of all the development that we need to. And do, uh, do you in general go to different tech branches around the world? Do, do you find taking part in conferences and events like this useful? We do, we do. We find that in certain markets, um, it can be more successful than others. Um, we believe that you know, in Russia, it's one of our key markets that we're going to continue focusing on um, in the coming years. So uh, we don't go to TechCrunch in every market where we're right. located, but we think that this is a very important one. And a, a, an interesting question, I think. A, a lot of the startups here on the alley are thinking of going global or thinking of going to the US market. Mm -hmm. For SurveyMonkey, the situation is that's exactly right. the opposite. You're right. going to the Russian market. What, what's your view on the Russian market from, from that side of the fence? So we view the Russian market as, as not only a significant opportunity in terms of just online usage uh, is growing. Um, we think that uh, you know, as businesses are trying to build new business models um, or trying to emerge, uh, we think that SurveyMonkey can be very useful in terms of the economic growth. Uh, for those organizations. Mm -hmm. So um, we see it as a significant opportunity. We saw early signals from our customers when we were offering the product in English, but to a Russian market, okay. where they were still using it. And so that told us if, we're lo if we were to localize, make it more appropriate for that market it, and cater to that market, uh, it could uh, yield a more aggressive growth path than it has. What would you're going to different markets, do you do any tweaks other than just localizing, just doing the interface in a local language? Are there any tweaks? So I think each market is unique, right? Um, step one is really the localization in terms of content, uh, making sure that it's available in the local language, that you can pay in the local currency. Um, the next steps, I think, are dependent by market. And what we're seeing um, from our perspective is that one of the most important things to adjust here in Russia is around billing and the billing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you start to get into application changes or business process changes. And so I think we're at that phase of making those changes. Really, um, yeah, that's very interesting. And do, when, when going to other markets, do you prefer to go solo or do you build partnerships? And if, if partnerships is, is your way, which partners would you look for in Russia? So we, we have been evolving SurveyMonkey from being a point solution, a product that people to use, to being more of a platform. Um, and in becoming a platform, you know, we think that people can leverage our infrastructure and integrate surveys into their core application. Um, so partnering with large you know, companies here who are users of SurveyMonkey um, is mm -hmm. one way. Partnering with small companies who are doing innovative things like TimePad, you know, integrating surveys into a service like that could be very interesting as well. So I think there are large partnerships, obviously, with the key internet players, but also small partnerships with some of the emerging technologies. Awesome. Do, do, do you, in general, do you screen you as a SurveyMonkey team? Do you screen what surveys there are? You know, like I don't know, some extreme or interesting or funny surveys. Yeah? So, so we don't. Um, we don't have a filter. No, no uh, I don't mean a filter. I mean, like, oh. you, you see some bizarre surveys that are funny or anything like that? Uh, I mean, we, we have millions of customers who are fielding research, you know, sometimes to um, figure out who wants to go to the picnic, you know, sometimes <laughs> to do something more serious. Uh, so in general, we find some pretty interesting use cases, but, but nothing comes to mind. Do you... Do you have you ever used SurveyMonkey for personal purposes, like going to picnics or 
I have. Like that? I have. I've used it for scheduling my family events and where we're traveling and who wants to do what. Um, yeah, absolutely. Is uh, our end customers, private customers, are are they a huge part of the Serving Monkey user base? So um, we have 16 million people globally, wow. uh, and the majority of our customers use the free product, um, and those are a lot of personal usage. Uh, so gathering information to make decisions, you know, in your personal life. There's a, a significant um, professional base as well. Um, who are doing more professional use cases like gathering feedback from customers for customer satisfaction, gathering feedback from employees for interests from employees, and we're doing market research. Great, and uh, we, uh, I also add that we're doing a Serving Monkey survey for this tech That's right. That's right. And we are looking forward to getting the results to see how it went and how your audience likes it. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll, we'll field it when everyone's done with the conference and, and see how people felt it went and if you can get some input for next year. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks Thank to Serving Monkey. Much. Thank you.